Welcome to our first class. I'm Staff Sergeant Hegart with Battalion Mortars. Our first class will be on deliberate occupations of a mortar and firing point. With our MFP occupations, we have them kind of themed around sports, deliberate being baseball, hasty being hockey. Um, just a quick uh, bullet format of what deliberate is. So first base is establishment of the ORP. Second base is conduct the MFP recon. Third base is occupy the MFP. Home run being the MFP is completely occupied and we're basically standing by for fire missions. And then at any point in time from when we initially start the occupation, anyone can call strikeout. So the lowest private all the way up to the PL or platoon sergeant can call strikeout, whether that's due to enemy, terrain, literally anything. And then going into hasty, hasty will be a follow on class, but hasty is hockey. Um, basically, as soon as hockey gets called, straight into a hair and bone, and then PL and second sergeant move up to do a very, very quick recon of the MFP. And then, as you can see, drop the gloves, the mortar platoon moves in to occupy. Going into deliberate, today's class, the platoon leader gains and maintains a situational understanding using available communications, equipment, map, intelligence, summary reports, otherwise known as sit reps, and other available resources. You guys can read the rest on basically how he's gaining the intel required to basically put the platoon in the best position for our MFPs and our occupations. Um, we're going to do our troop leading procedures, and then based off Everything I've stated so far, what the PL is doing is he's going to select primary and alternate mortar and firing points or positions. The mortar element moves to occupy the position, moves under a covered and concealed route, avoids likely ambush sites and danger areas, maintains operational security, maintains 360 degree security, and maintains comms with battalion command and fires net. As you can see here, these steps are basically followed under everything you learn as an infantryman. So these, all these tasks are still everything that a rifle platoon would um, do as they move as well. Going into first base, establish the objective rally point. So first thing we're gonna do is halt behind sight and sound of the tentative MFP. That's going to be two to 400 meters from the projected MFP. We're at a minimum of one major train feature away. As soon as the halt is called, everyone will conduct sills, stop, look, listen, smell. This will be anywhere from three to five minutes or deemed complete by the platoon leader. The platoon will then go into a long halt posture. So for mounted operations, that's a herringbone. For dismounted, basically, Four gun, three gun, etc., will somewhat collapse on one gun to bring the platoon together. So that way the squad leaders aren't running 100 to 200 meters up and down the, uh, the halt to get information from the PL. We'll get into what the long haul posture looks like for mounted and dismounted further on in the PowerPoint. Um, as soon as that's done, establish security with the 240s at the 6, 12, and then train enemy dependent for the 3 or 9. So what that means is one gun, they're responsible for the 6 o'clock, correction, one gun is responsible for the 12 o'clock, four gun responsible for the 6 o'clock, and then three gun will be able to flex their 240 either to the 3 or the 9 o'clock going to disseminate information. So PL is going to put out where we are, where we're going, and basically a situation update. If the PL deems that, hey, this is our ORP, we are where we need to be to conduct the recon of the MFP, we're going to push out to the squad leaders. So one, three, and four gun, what that means is they're now basically setting in the rest of their team members in the long haul posture, making sure that they are 
you know, behind cover and concealment, giving them sectors of fire, that type of stuff. And then for two gun, and two gun specifically, they are part of the recon team. So that's why we haven't pushed out two guns, 240 or anything like that, because they are part of the recon team. So two gun stays in the center. PL puts out that we're gonna conduct the recon. And as soon as he says that, leadership knows who's gonna be on the recon. So that'll be the platoon leader, the section sergeant, an RTO, FTC chief, and all of two gun. Two gun squad leader, gunner, assistant gunner, and ammo bearer. The special equipment that they'll take with them. So the PL will have an ASIP, a 154, an aiming circle and tripod. The section sergeant will have a 154, dagger, M2 compass. RTO will have an ASIP. FDC chief will have an LHMBC. Two gun squad leader, 154, lensetic compass, M2 compass. Two guns gunner will have the 81 base plate with an M67 sight box. The assistant gunner, the bipod, and the 240. And the ammo bearer will have the 81 cannon and the aiming poles. These are just the special equipment. Everything done before this through our troop leading procedures, all PCCs and PCIs that they maintain on their person will also be included with this. Once the recon team is prepped, the platoon leader will issue a five point contingency plan to the platoon sergeant at the choke point. Choke point is based on direction from the ORP to the MFP. Preferably the choke point is set in the vicinity of the 12 o'clock position by the platoon sergeant and medic. That's basically saying, Wherever we're going to leave the ORP, the platoon sergeant and medic will stage a choke point at that position. So if we're going to move, if, we're, if our direction of travel is in the 12 o'clock or north, and we're going to move east, platoon sergeant and medic will set up at the 3 o'clock. That's all that's saying. Five-point contingency, contingency plan is just a GATWA as an acronym. G. Where are you going? So distance, direction, shown on the map. Others coming with for O. So that's the total number of people and by name of who is coming with. Time, time to be, to be gone. Basically, basic time hack. So allow at least one hour to conduct a recon. W is the what to do if time hack is missed. So this will be pace plan for comms and basically a pace plan for what the actions are for doing or establishing comms with the PL. And then actions on contact for A. So that is both for the recon party and the platoon. The platoon sergeant will confirm the GATWA, then count out the recon. The platoon sergeant will then disseminate the GATWA to the entire ORP. The FTC check and R FTC RTO will maintain monitor comms with battalion command and the fire's net. So as soldiers are going through the choke point, literally what we're describing here is a choke point, platoon sergeants on one side, medics on the other, and all members of the recon team will file between those two. They'll get hands-on, basically a tap system. So not only counting, but they're also getting hands-on each member leaving the ORP. As soon as the recon team steps out of the ORP, we initiate second base, which is conducting the recon. The recon team moves to the projected MFP in a squad, fire team wedge formation. Anytime anyone calls a halt, immediately drop to a knee, pull security and conduct seals. Once we get to our tentative MFP, we're gonna immediately in place SNO. SNO being surveillance and observation. That'll be two guns gunner, AG, and AB. SNO will pull security on the tentative MFP during the recon and maintain constant surveillance on the tentative MFP while the remainder of the platoon occupies. So literally from the point that we pull halt, conduct seals, and place SNO, SNO will remain in place until the entire platoon moves forward. The platoon leader is going to provide SNO with another GATWA prior to initiating the recon of the MFP. 
Second Sergeant and Two Gun Squad Leader will go to the left, and the PL and FDC Chief will go to the right of the SNO position. We're talking about left and right and actually doing the recon. We're going to use the clover leaf and or fan method. They mean the same thing. And basically what their titles are is how it's described. So Second Sergeant will move out from SNO and then basically circle back around, come in, not breaking cover and concealment of any wood line, getting a look at the MFP. They'll go back and circle out and around again. They'll continue to do this based on the timelines given from the PL. And then they'll move back and PL and section sergeant will brief each other based on what they saw. So what PL and section sergeant are going to be looking for, these are the characteristics of good MFP. Def laid, can't be hit with direct or low angle fire. Can be entered without enemy observation, good cover and concealment, avoids obvious avenues of approach, more than one entry and exit point, takes advantage of his existing train features and natural, natural obstacles. Surface conditions. Soil conditions at each mortar position must be well drained and firm so that a mortar base plate does not sink when fired. If, a mortar, if mortars are mounted on carriers, the soil must be firm enough for the carriers to remain stable when the mortars are fired. Sandbags and other material can be used when firing from hard surfaces such as roads or urban terrain. When the ground is frozen, slots should be cut into the ground to allow the base plate space to sit properly. When the temperature cycle above and below freezing, personnel must ensure base plates do not become frozen to the ground. All of these bullets are identical in anything you'd find in the Ranger Handbook when it talks about good characteristics of a patrol base. The only difference is Rifle platoons in a, set in a patrol base aren't firing mortars. So our biggest thing that we need to confirm is that the soil will allow us to shoot multiple fire missions without the base plate sinking too much and at the same time not be firm enough that we damage our base plates. Going into our occupations, this is an illustration of our mounted ORP and our dismounted ORP that I referred to earlier in the slideshow. Mounted ORP, each block represents a truck with one gun, PL, two gun, FTC, three, four, and platoon sergeant in the order of movement. You can see on the illustration the 240 positions, the dotted line representing three guns, flex 240. For the dismounted ORP, Roughly making a triangle, and that's going to be 100% MET-TC dependent on cover and concealment. But basically what you have is one gun at the 10 o'clock, three gun at the 2 o'clock, and four gun at the 6 o'clock. Two guns going to immediately go straight to the center because they know if we're going to be going into a deliver occupation, they're going to be in the recon team. Same thing with headquarters. PL, Section Sergeant, FTC Chief are also members of the Recon team, so they're also meeting, going to meet in the center. This also creates a central hub for the squad leaders to go in and out of the, or the ORP, disseminate, disseminate information to their guys. Second base continued. PL pinpoints MFP location and places the aiming circle and then obtains pre-deflections of the gun line once the section sergeant is complete with, the, with these duties. I'll get into what pre-deflections mean for those of you that uh, don't quite grasp that yet uh, later on in the slideshow. Second Sergeant, in places the aiming poles facing the direction of fire, ensures all gun locations are at intervals between mortars. So for 60s, 25 to 30, 81s, 35 to 45, and for the 120s, 60 meters. So this is once again is going to be based off the terrain. We're not going to put an 81 out in the complete open or anything like that. So this is all basically what doctrine says is the optimal distancing between guns for a parallel sheaf, but based on cover and concealment and survivability of the platoon, they'll be adjusted to conform with the terrain. While the second sergeant's doing that, 
He's also going to be getting base plate grids for all the locations. He'll disseminate all this information to the FTC chief, so that way he can input all this data into the LHMBC. The RT RTO will always have and maintain comms with battalion command. SNO will maintain overwatch from their position, providing early warning if enemy forces spotted. This is important because while the PL is on the aiming circle, he has absolutely no gear on. He has his kits completely off, ACH is off, watches, weapon is at least five meters away from his location. This is due to the aiming circle and the magnet that's in it. So SNO needs to pay attention to what's going on basically behind the PL. After PL set up and the section sergeant has placed all aiming poles in the direction of fire and got base plate grids, section sergeant two gun squad leader will issue the GATWA to SNO and move back up move back to the ORP to link up with the rest of the platoon utilizing far and near recognition. Second Sergeant, once back at the ORP, will back brief the platoon sergeant and squad leaders of the MFP. What that's going to mean is going to let them know if there's any change in the order of movement, if there is a different route that can expedite the process of getting the platoon in there, and then if PL has pushed out any pre-deflections, those will all get disseminated to the squad leaders. Pre-deflections are the same steps as what we do when we basically um, lay in our guns, so reciprocal lay. So instead of them, instead of the PL aim pointing the actual sight on the cannon because it's not there yet, he's going to take the top of the pulls that this section sergeant has laid out and get a pre-deflection on those. What this does is basically take out the first two steps on reciprocal lay and help expedite the process of getting the guns laid. Going into third base, third base is the actual occupation of the MFP. So after section sergeant disseminates the information to the platoon, the platoon takes the prescribed route to the MFP based on the guidance and direction of the section sergeant. It is possible for the order of movement to change based off the terrain and the gun target line of the MFP. What we're saying here is that based on the route into the MFP, we might have to change the order of movement from it being one gun in the lead, so now four gun goes in the lead to expedite the, the actual occupation. So that way, especially if we're mounted in our trucks, the rest of the platoon isn't waiting for one truck to go around any obstacles or anything like that. It can be smooth and fast to get our guns up. For dismounted operations, two gun will lead the platoon to the MFP because two gun has seen the MFP and knows the route. This leads to a fast and smooth occupation. SNO links up with their squads at the release point. So for two gun, since two gun is on SNO, so the gunner, the AG, and the AB all remain at the MFP conducting SNO for the PL. Two gun squad leader and the second sergeant will be in their VIC. As soon as they hit the release point, SNO will pick up and go back to two gun squad leader. We'll then set guns up with pre-coordination. So with comms, there'll be pre-deflection if that already hasn't been determined. And without comms, will be an azimuth, which basically goes into normal reciprocal lay. So, Gunners will aim point the aiming circle and vice versa for the aiming circle on the guns and will get laid in. Pre-coordinated deflection, peel can conduct reciprocal lay on the upper tip of the aiming stake that the section sergeant oriented at each gun position. As the gun is placed into action, the gunner will index the data onto the site. As previously stated, this is just to reiterate the point. Until you actually see, like in a practical exercise, of what the PL is doing, it makes a lot more sense. Um, that's why we continue to reiterate what pre-deflection is. All right, 
the gun line and the PL conduct reciprocal lay. In layman's terms, we're getting the guns, basically guns are getting up. They're getting basically refined into our gun target line. And then as soon as re reciprocal lay is completed, poles will go out to 38, 22 being our primary and alternate, 0, 7 if we have to as a contingency, and then emergency being having two gun squad leader index his site where he can get a clear sight of his poles relative to the terrain. At this point in time, after the guns are laid, we'll establish our shoot and hide posture. Hide positions are located in a cover and concealed area and are occupied by mortar crews when not firing. Shoot and hide positions are an effective technique when cover and concealed positions aren't available or an enemy counterfire is anticipated. So having 120s, we have to have Humvees. Humvees are hard to do a shoot and hide position. What that means for the Humvees is they're crashing the wood line. Does it doesn't mean they're you know crashing the whole truck into the wood line or basically pushing the trucks as far into the wood line as necessary to cover up our um, area that the Humvees are taking for visibility. For 81s, it's much, much easier to do shoot and hide positions. What that means is 81s will be laid. As soon as they are laid and the poles are ran out, the cannon and the bipod are taken out of the base plate and sat in on the rucks behind a wood line. Base plates remain in place and are covered with any type of leaves or debris to cover up the visibility of the actual base plates. So if you got a fire mission for an 81s, squad leader and his crew would grab the 81 and the bipod, connect it to the base plate, and then take all commands from FTC or the section sergeant. Once guns are all laid on azimuth and reciprocal lay is complete, that's our home run. MFP is occupied. So once we deem occupied, FTC relays to fires that guns are laid, they're on the gun target line, or on any priority mission, and that we are ready to receive fire missions. And then we, the platoon as a whole, transition to patrol-based establishment. Going into what we have for patrol-based establishment, this is where it starts looking a little different from your rifle platoon and what they do as far as a patrol base. So we have MFPs, whereas the rifle platoon would have basically a patrol base. The only thing with that, patrol bases are basically for a rest cycle for that rifle platoon. And an MFP, this is where we're shooting from. So we start with mortar tubes laid on gun target line, establish 240 positions, camo netting, and placing obstacles. And as we're going through this, this is continuous. So if one gun gets their tubes laid before the rest of the platoon, they're immediately going into the rest of their priorities of work. As the tubes are being laid, either section sergeant or platoon sergeant will be giving basically hasty 240 positions um, while the PL is setting in the guns. Um, once we call up home run, the PL will then go one by one to each 240 and make sure he agrees with where the section sergeant and platoon sergeant put that 240. Or since they're in just a hasty position, we have more time to put them where they can get a better um, sector of fire. Once the 240s are set in to the PL's liking, squad leaders are immediately going to push out range cards to the 240s. FTC will ensure that the their their AO is going to be ready for blackout for periods of darkness. While all of this is going on and the 240s are set in, PL will then 
you immediately start basically calling up to battalion or battalion fires, getting a sit rep on friendlies, enemies, anything that's changed during the course of our occupation. He'll gather all that data and then push that out to squad leaders. So squad leaders will meet at the PL's truck. PL will disseminate all, informa all information that he has and then squad leaders will go out to their squads and disseminate all that information. Throughout our occupation of each MFP, the spot checks will be done by PL, section sergeant, platoon sergeant, and the squad leaders. As we set in and we get to a pace where we're doing weapons maintenance, 240s will be replaced by an M4 one at a time and no longer than 10 minutes per 240. Platoon Sergeant will consolidate all log stat, SI, per stat, and conduct resupply with, with when needed. Hygiene, foot checks, chow, and rest. Basically after the occupation is complete, we have hit all of our other priorities of work is when we go into the rest cycle. So these four, these last four bullets will basically be interchangeable for as long as we're in this MFP. At any point in time, we can receive fire missions. So squad leaders need to have complete accountability for all of their soldiers, as well as headquarters. Any fire missions go on, 240s remain pulling security, and the squads immediately go to their gun awaiting the fire command. So at this point with the 240s pushed out, that's going to leave basically three guys per gun for the fire missions. Next slides, we'll be going over videos on some of our training events that we've done so that we kind of get a grasp, better understanding of how, how our delivery occupation works. So here, this is already to the point of third base. The section sergeant and two-gun squad leader has already gone back to the ORP, and the platoon is moving into the tentative MFP. So using comms, directing traffic, and the VICs exactly where we need them, you can see SNO breaking down because they see their two-guns VIC hitting the release point. So now they're going to be awaiting two-gun squad leader to show up. Section sergeant is guiding in trucks exactly where he wants them so that way it limits trucks moving on the MSB. So once the trucks get pulled in, the only movement they should do after the guns are laid are pushing into the wood line. You can see one gun is already starting to set up their 120. And that's why we're talking about one gun or any other squads are going to be going into different tasks on the prior to uh, on the prior to the work. Saw there PL on his aiming circle, immediately seeing that one gun should be the first gun ready for reciprocal lay. He's a, just anticipating them getting their gun up. All the members of the squad know their roles on getting the 120 off of the base plate, or correction, off of the trailer. And then going into, from here, basically each gun's going to set up their guns, reciprocal lay will be complete, and then we go into our priorities of work. This image shows you basically priorities of work complete, gun line is established, trucks are camoed and the only thing that we weren't able to do here with the complete occupation is to push trucks into the wood line this is based you can't see off the image off of met tc um, we couldn't push the trucks in due to the terrain the trucks would have gotten stuck um, you can also see the truck right in front of you is fdc so one of their priorities of work is if they can't establish comms based off of their comms within the truck they immediately know to push out a Comp 201 to the top of their truck and immediately try reestablishing comms with battalion net and battalion fires.
If you have any questions regarding the class that I presented to you today, refer to your squad leader or your section sergeant for questions pertaining to this class.